Well, even if you're a big supporter of Bernie Sanders, I think we can all agree that he's not the most telegenic guy in the entire country. <laughs> and a description of his voice, melodious, would not be at the top of his list. However, Bernie is picking up uh, some speed and some momentum. And of course, everybody understands that there's no way Bernie could ever be the nominee, let alone be elected. It's just not possible. Couldn't happen. Somebody that unpleasant, somebody that simply just plain prickly could never be elected uh, or even become the nominee of the of the um, major political party in this country. It's never happened before. Or has it? Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Ott. And this is your uh, Right Angle uh, brought to you by our friends over at the Patriot Post who uh, provide a number of awesome uh, memes that are available at the link down below. Uh, guys, I remember thinking, seeing the same article, much that, that we talked about on your episode, Scott, that Bernie was gaining some traction. And, you know, is it is it completely out of the question that this guy would win? I'm looking at him from a just from a from a a point of view of the appeal of people who are not Bernie voters. You know, it, it, he's, he comes off as very cranky, he comes off as kind of disheveled, he comes off as a bit nuts, and, uh, and he's not real easy to listen to. And I thought, so this could never really happen. However, in the election of 1872, Ulysses S. Grant, in his first uh, run for the presidency, found himself against a candidate who was actually a liberal Republican. They believed this was the only person who could possibly defeat U.S. Grant coming off being the hero of the Civil War. And they nominated, the, for the Democrats nominated their candidate, which was a liberal Republican by the name of Horace Greeley. And uh, as you can see from this picture, uh, Horace Greeley is, in fact, certainly a runner-up for at least photogenic uh, uh, presidential candidate of all time. In fact, when you put the two together, you really do have to ask yourself, you know, Bernie Sanders, Horace Greeley separated at birth? Is, is, were they twins? Certainly Bernie's old enough. In any event, nobody really knows. But my point is this, guys. Um, if, if you look at uh, Horace Greeley here, you can see that he doesn't just have a neck beard. He has kind of a chest beard. He has white tufts of hair coming out from his collar. And that all of a sudden makes me think that Bernie's practically Pierce Brosnan, Steve. Uh, do you um, – <laughs> Don't tell my wife that. She will Pierce murder you Brosnan. to death. <laughs> now, look. Here, here's what I maintain. Uh, I'm – Elizabeth Warren is fading. Bernie could have – is certainly got the, the momentum, but Bernie's not going to be the nominee unless unless Joe Biden has, a, 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 as we mentioned in one of our other episodes, a, a Jim Stockdale kind of a meltdown yeah. where it becomes clear that he genuinely does not have the the mental ability to handle this. That, that, and that campaign just simply collapses. It's the only way that this could ever happen. But that is not a terribly unlikely possibility listening to Joe Biden lately. So let's say that Joe Biden does, in fact, just simply lose his marbles to such a degree that you can't paper it over anymore. And Bernie Sanders becomes the nominee. Is this guy ever stand a chance of being elected? Oh, wow. Uh, first, I just I, I need to say something about Horace Greeley. Uh, Nietzsche wrote that I think it was Nietzsche that when you stare into the abyss, the abyss stares into you. But that was a, a mistranslation from the original German. He was actually talking about Horace Greeley's neck hair. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. It is sure. the most repulsive thing I, I've I ever don't, seen. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know where it's going. It just unsettles me very, very deeply to know that it is somehow present. It's just <laughs> wrong. Uh, so the question was, could Bernie Sanders actually win the presidency? Well, Horace Greeley presented the same problem to the yeah. Democrats that Bernie Sanders presented. He was the only person in the country, apparently, who right. thought this was a good look. And they certainly couldn't have talked him out of it because if they could have, they would have. They would have, yeah. But they're, they're running this guy who looks a bit like a circus attraction and – and they're kind of stuck with him. Well, what they're in right now, I don't know if you've noticed over the last few weeks, that the uh, establishment Democrats seem to be in panic mode. The, the very things you were talking about, point. Bill, um, uh, Warren fading, Biden's mental faculties being an unknown quantity and, and all the rest, they are in panic mode. Uh, Scott's segment this week 
quoted that Jonathan Chait column at length, and Jonathan Chait is about as far left wing a writer as uh, you get without going, you know, to the People's World Weekly. And he's frightened of a Bernie candidacy and wrote this denouncing column uh, earlier this week or, or today. Uh, uh, Hillary Clinton has been saying bad things about Bernie. The Obama camp let it leak that Barack Obama is not pleased with the idea of a Bernie candidacy. But let me tell you what this reminds me of. Uh, Remember the scene in Jaws where Roy Scheider is at the back of the boat and he's got the big old bucket of chum and he's scooping the, the chum the Jesus out of me out the back of the boat right and he's not even looking backwards he's 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 hollering at the front and as he's doing all this paying no attention to what's going on behind him the shark comes up and just you know does one of these and it it it, it really is one of the most frightening reveals in movie history because up until that moment you'd seen maybe a shadow of the shark under the water you'd seen the dorsal fin. And that was it. And then, boom, coming up out of the chum. These establishment Democrats going on this huge anti-Bernie screed over this last week or two, they are chumming the waters for Bernie supporters. They are absolutely doing that. They are fired up by this stuff. They're thinking, we got these people panicked. We've got these people on the run. I, I think they're doing it exactly wrong. What Hillary did in 2016, if indeed she stole the nomination, she did it kind of behind the scenes, quietly. This very public panic mode. I'm telling you what, if anything, if anything could get Sanders the nomination, it's the way they're chumming the waters right now. Hmm. What about it, Scott? Um, I, I think the I, I think that the pathway I described is not is not of trivial possibility. You know, that, that Bernie basically is going to come in second and then and then Joe Biden self-destructs for some reason and they find themselves with Bernie Sanders as their nominee. Do you think that do you think that they can overcome his his uh, well let's just say quirkiness for the sake of the of the argument uh, or do you think they're stuck with uh, neckbeard who's going to lose and you might as well just you know uh, enjoy the party while you can? Well, first of all, I think that the reason why Ulysses Grant won that election against Horace Greeley was because CNN endorsed him. Uh, <laughs> you remember <laughs> when they appeared together. <laughs> So, you know, things have changed a little bit. In fact, if Abraham Lincoln had run for president in the 1970s, he would have had a hard time uh, getting elected because even though we only had three channels back then, the more time you saw his face on TV, the less confidence you would have in his ability no, to be the president. Truth. Um, however, there has been a uh, not so subtle shift in the way we view uh Tele telegenicism, let me call it that. Um, and there was a time when uh, TV audiences valued smoothness and slickness and lots of makeup and carefully groomed hair. And, you know, everything had to be just ever so. Uh, but because of the democratization of television, by that I mean essentially YouTube, um, the ability of every American to have a TV studio in his pocket um, that has changed the way we look at content. And that slick, polished stuff that you see on TV actually has a patina of phoniness about it. Because people look at that it's and they true. go, that guy doesn't really look that way. Nobody has teeth like Joe Biden. I mean, like that guy there <laughs> on the news. <laughs> and, you know, people people actually devalue things that look too slick, too smooth. And I think one of the great things that Bernie Sanders has going for him is he's the least smooth, least slick candidate who's run yeah, in you're the, absolutely, you're absolutely in the right. modern era. He seems authentic because of that, because he, for some reason, out of his whole, all those volunteers on his campaign, nobody has a hairbrush. I mean, there's, there's, there's nobody who could like quickly steam his jacket before he gets out on TV. You know, he just, he looks like he is a man on a mission with his hair on fire and he doesn't care what he looks like. And the authenticity of that in the YouTube generation, I think really connects with people, even beyond any of his policies. The fact that he really seems to care about what he's talking about. That's the other thing about politicians that makes him look insincere. Because of their polished nature, they don't seem to have any passion. This guy seems like he is he is just ablaze every time he's talking about his campaign because it really seems that these things matter to him and that he can't disguise it. 
when, you know, you have other people who are just trying to make sure that they don't make a gaffe on TV. And, you know, he's the kind of guy who goes, nobody cares about your damn emails. You know, like, no, no candidate talks like that. So anyway, I, I really think that he, I think Horace Greeley's time has come, at least on the Democratic side of things. And I think people, if, because there's so much phoniness on uh, in politics in general, and specifically on that slate of candidates um, on the Democratic Party, that I think he has a better chance this year than any other year to really scoring points with people who have come to value natural, uh, spur of the moment, um, authentic, genuine looking um, telegenicism. One of the things I've been fascinated with since I started doing this political analysis was was what is downstream of the idea that people vote how they feel rather than what they think. I think that's been pretty much proven. And certainly the uh, the 2012 election with Mitt Romney, where he won every category on exit polling, except for who do you think cares most about you, yeah. uh, which Barack Obama apparently won 93 to 7. Um, so so I'm very interested in the mechanics of of emotionalism and 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 the sort of the uh, the subtext, the subconscious appeal or, of, of people or so on. Um, my my primary concern uh, going into this election was uh, over uh, Pete Buttigieg because because he had a quality of calmness, niceness, accessibility, friendliness, and so on. He's certainly uh, off the table. We might see him as a presidential uh, uh, on the ticket, vice presidential. But Donald Trump has always been seen as abrasive and his, <clears throat> and his contrast of whoever, even Hillary Clinton, can look less abrasive when compared to Donald Trump because Donald Trump is speaking his mind and so on. So there is something to be said for the Democrats running somebody who has an appeal to people who are reasonable, who want some sense of security, who want some sense of, of you know, fundamental. This, I, l let me just cut to the chase. All of that was nonsense. They want somebody who they like better. It's just that simple, really. I like this guy. I don't like him. Classic example of this was in 1960. People who listened to the uh, Nixon um, Kennedy debate on the radio thought Nixon won it hands down. But the people who watched it on television thought that Kennedy won it because they liked him better. They liked the way he looked. Um, if that is the case, then then the Democrats have managed to come up with, if, and assuming this unlikely event actually happens, they will have managed to pre present the only person in America, in the political scene anyway, who who can make Donald Trump look like Mr. Rogers, whose 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 fundamental abrasiveness, whose fundamental character, just the plain prickliness of him, makes Donald Trump look 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 debonair. Um, I don't. I don't think it's at all unlikely, actually, that Bernie Sanders will become the nominee only because he's the only two people left standing. And I don't have a lot of confidence in the person who's at the front of the list in being able to go the, diff the distance. If, 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 yeah. if Biden doesn't have a catastrophe, Biden's the nominee. I don't think there's any question about that. But Biden has been showing signs that a catastrophe may not be too far off. And then I suspect what will happen will be we will see an election where a very large number of people are not turned on by this guy and not interested in him at all, in fact, repulsed by him, but largely enthusiastic numbers of people will come out for him very hard. And I suspect that will be, again, divisive for this country. Um, but if you really asked me to put up, if there was somebody I would really like to see put up against Donald Trump uh, in terms of convincing the American people, this is the sane way to go. Uh, Bernie Sanders is the guy I would I would definitely want to have up there. Um, if Bernie Sanders was, when I say attractive, I don't necessarily mean physically attractive, but if Bernie Sanders had appeal, charm, he'd be a lot more dangerous than he is. Scott says he looks like he comes out there with his hair on fire. I maintain Bernie Sanders comes out looking like he'd had his hair on fire and was simply put out just before he came out on stage. <laughs> but in any event, that's that. And I suppose we'll see. It's going to be an interesting election either way. Um, and uh, pretty soon we'll be able to stop speculating. We'll have some actual data and we'll be able yeah. to see what's what the American people really, really think. That'll do it for this edition of Right Angle, made possible by the paying members at BillWhittle.com. We'd always love to have you join us. Keep these messages coming. And our friends over at the Patriot Post who, who uh, continue to promote our work and we are happy to promote theirs. So for this edition of Right Angle, I'm Bill. This is Steve uh, Green, Scott Ott, and we'll see you next week on Right Angle. Right Angle.